Tonight is, like Mike said, is a demonstration speech on how to lead an effective growth table. Whether you're talking about a growth group in alcohol or in some kind of drug rehab, some kind of form like that that's an emotional healing setting, that's what I want to describe to you tonight. If you look at a table like this, generally speaking, we're going to have 8 to 12 people around, this is square, but ours would be round, around the round table, and we would have one leader. Or in best case scenario, we'd really be more called a facilitator, although the terminology could be leader. <clears throat> the reason I distinguish the difference between leading and facilitating is that generally speaking, there's a topic that's been taught from stage or from some other place. So what we're doing is we're helping them to understand that they've learned that topic, whatever it is, and now they're just simply talking through that topic. And the facilitator's job is to keep the table safe so that people can have the best atmosphere at this table for the maximum amount of growth. One of the other benefit or one of the other criteria to have that table and to have growth around that criteria, no matter what the emotional issue is, whether it's divorce, marriage, whether it's any any form of thing, disgrace. Which actually means unmerited favor. And the reason we want to have grace or unmerited favor is this. <clears throat> that no matter what the differences are, they're accepted into the group, no matter what their belief system is, they're accepted into the growth, into the group, so that they can actually verbalize that. Because a lot of times when they verbalize it, then they can figure out what's going on within themselves and be in a safe environment to be able to do so. Because the number one fear of any type of growth group like that is to come in and to feel embarrassed they're nervous, they're scared, no one's going to understand me. And the remarkable thing is, is, no matter what the issue is, there's somebody at that table that can relate to you. <clears throat> so, in between all of that, I would like to describe what I think is the perfect way to lead or facilitate a table like this. Now, I recommend always having something in your hand. It can be a salt shaker, a pepper shaker, it can be a microphone. It can be anything that you want that when you have it in your hand, like standing up here, I've got the floor. Well, if you're sitting at a table right here and the guy across the table or the woman across the table decides they want to talk, it doesn't become safe. But if you have them hand something or have them pass something around that table, whatever it is, when they have this, they have the floor. And the reason I think this is the most important and most effective way to lead a table is this. It self-monitors the table. Let's say you have a three-minute table rule that you're, you're only allowed to speak for three minutes. <clears throat> when you have something in the hand, you are actually cautious of the volume of time that you're spending. You also know if, if you're tentative or you don't like to talk in front of a group, you know nobody will interrupt you. And if they do, what generally happens, because it is self-regulated, because of whatever they have in their hands, the guy that has it a lot of times, or woman will, do you want this? Oh, wait a minute. And then they'd be quiet. So literally, this, whatever it is that you're passing around, becomes a self-regulating table. It gives grace. It gives safety to the speaker. It also helps facilitate that going all the way around. Now, you don't necessarily have to go around in order, although I think that a, a real good facilitator would do that for several times until the table gets to a safe place and that they know that it's gelling. And then you might be passing it over. Just tell them to pass it to whatever they want to, and then it becomes a game. And after it becomes so gelled that the table's working in order like that, what ends up happening is they'll feel safe enough then to just kind of pass it around and then maybe a little bit of input from this person and this doesn't get in the way then and then they simply pass it. Self-regulating. There's many other different styles of leading the table. Some facilitators enjoy the popcorn method. The popcorn method is, is you just sit there and you ask a question 
and then whoever answers it, answers it, and then they go like this. Problem with that type of a discussion around a table is this. Again, there could be these two people that start talking, and this guy wants to talk, and he'll just start talking. And so it, cre it does create an element of unsafety, or uh, I guess a safety violation, because now this one doesn't, whoever was talking first doesn't feel respected. <clears throat> There's a second, uh, a third type of way to run the table. Throw a question out there and simply wait for an answer. A lot of table facilitators do that. They'll let the table become uncomfortable until somebody can't stand it no more and then they talk, which is great in some type of growth groups, but in the particular type of groups I'm talking about, you really have to answer the question yourself first. And you have to go as honest as you can, because then a facilitator, but you're kind of leading because now you're actually inviting them to go as deep as you went, and to go as deep as you went all the way around the table, no matter what the subject is. If you're talking about feelings, or if you're talking about a family of origin issue, let's say, or a drinking problem, and if you have a problem, I mean, if you didn't, I guess that wouldn't be so effective. I mean, you don't want to lie about it, but you want to make sure that you go as deep as you possibly can, and it will do it. Now, I've practiced this. I've done this. I said a real short, shallow answer, and it went all the way around the table. I went real deep, and they went deep all the way around the table. I thought, huh, that's interesting. I tried it one more time. I went just shallow again. Oh, we were on table, shallow as can be. So by leading by example, and or facilitating <coughs> by example, and going deep as possible, that's how you can effectively run any type of uh, a growth style table around your emotional values. Mr. Toastmaster.